Right now, and I mean this instant, delete every digital trace of any menstrual tracking. This was the expression published on Twitter by Gina Neff, professor of technology at the University of Oxford. Last year, after the Supreme Court of the United States revoked Roe versus Wade decision, which gave constitutional status to the right to abortion in this country. Roe versus Wade recognized that women have the right to make sexual and reprodu reproductive decisions, such as termination of pregnancy, as a derivative of the right to privacy. With that decision to overturn this historic ruling, abortion is no longer considered a constitutional right, and it will be up to each state to set the limits it wishes to impose on pregnant women. This case opened the doors for us to analyze aspects from femtech from privacy perspective. I am referring to the menstrual cycle applications that emerge as a simple solution to make control over our body. These applications allow you to schedule menstrual cycles and track them during the phases of the cycle to know, for example, the regularity of a period know which are the fertile days or know the days of ovulation. The facilities they offer are key for many women who want to become pregnant or to prevent pregnancy. In 2019, after a study by the Privacy International Organization, it was revealed that these applications collected information about sexual life, masturbation habits, or the use of contraceptives. Information that was accessible to others and vulnerable to attacks. Meanwhile, a 2023 report by the International Digital Accountability Council found that menstruation trackers were sending personal information on encrypted or shading data with third parties without fully disclosing it in their privacy policies. To fully understand what is behind many of these applications, the British media, The Guardian in 2019, revealed that one of the most popular fertility apps for, for, for women was financed by people who support politicians who promote lines contrary to the word control and abortion. It is not a few fact that the excessive collection of data by these platforms responds to industries focused on the manufacturing of feminine products. The femtech or women's health technology market has not stopped growing. On the contrary, over time, all kinds of needs have been created, generating an exponential increase in this industry. Since it is a business that moves millions of dollars in the world. Figures from the Maguire University of Australia from the Cybersecurity Center published in the British magazine BMJ in 2022 indicate about these free applications. One, that 88% include lessons that allow you to share information with, th with third parties that is practically nine out of 10 women. Two, 88% of these apps did not have privacy policy. And three, that 23% communicated their data in a certain way. The developers try to monetize these free apps with nutrition data, 
menstrual cycles and pass it on to third parties who may be companies, research, but they may also be insurance companies that use these technologies to select their clients and manage their business. But what is really worrying here is what these investigations reveal that conservative groups could be behind the financing of platforms that collect data of a strictly sensitive nature. Given the lack of guarantees regarding the management of all the information collected by menstrual cycle apps, what happens with, if tomorrow, due to some police requirement, women who require an abortion in the United States begin to the persecute and these apps finally transform it into a technology at the service of surveillance. In brief, in conclusion, to summarize, we want femtech, but before that, we want respect for the privacy and protection of women's personal data. Thank you so much for your attention.